What's going on everybody? So earlier this week, we saw the launch and approval of the first Bitcoin linked ETF. And the first one to launch is BITO, which is the Bitcoin strategy ETF by ProShares. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about futures based ETFs versus regular ETFs and why I strongly oppose investing in a futures based ETF in Bitcoin. So first, let's go to the ProShares page and read about this new Bitcoin strategy ETF. So on the page, it says that the ProShares Bitcoin strategy ETF with the ticker BITO is the first US Bitcoin linked ETF offering investors an opportunity to gain exposure to Bitcoin returns in a convenient, liquid and transparent way. And they do this by investing in Bitcoin futures contracts. So there are two important things here. On this website, the ProShares company is stating that they do not invest directly in Bitcoin, and that's because they are investing in Bitcoin futures. And second, the price and performance of Bitcoin futures should be expected to differ from the current spot price of Bitcoin. So first, they don't hold actual Bitcoin. And the second is that the futures contracts are going to be priced differently than the actual price of Bitcoin or the spot price of Bitcoin. The third problem is that we have an expense ratio that's close to 1%, which is a really high management fee this day and age with all of the low cost ETFs that are out there. But since this is an actively managed futures ETF, it's understandable why the fee is higher. Now the problem with futures based ETFs is that you are not only exposing yourself to changes in the spot price of the asset, you are actually exposing yourself to the futures contracts relationship to the spot price of the asset. So let me go through an example here. So in this visualization that I have, we are looking at three respective futures contracts. We are looking at the November future, December future, and the January futures contract on whatever asset. It doesn't matter because the concepts will hold true no matter what asset we are looking at. So the dotted line here is the spot price or the actual price of the asset we are tracking. So if, for example, if I go to Coinbase and it says that Bitcoin is currently trading for 65,000, that is the spot price of Bitcoin. But if I go and look at the November futures contract on Bitcoin and that is trading for 67,000, then the futures contract is trading at a $2,000 premium to the spot price of Bitcoin. So in this visualization that I created, we can see that over time, the futures contract, which is each red arrow, the futures contract price will decay or approach the spot price of the asset as it approaches its expiration date. Now, a futures-based ETF is investing in these futures contracts. So if we can imagine a scenario where the futures ETF invests in the November future, then they are investing at that higher price than the spot price, and if the spot price does not increase over time, then the futures value is slowly going to bleed towards the spot price by the time of the November futures expiration date. And then the fund is going to have to take that money and sell the November future and then roll it into the December future, which is again at an even higher premium to the spot price of the asset. And then again, if we have a flat asset price over time, then that December futures contract is going to bleed towards the spot price yet again, and the futures-based ETF will experience further losses. And then finally, they'll have to take that money, sell those futures, and then put it into the January contract, and the process repeats. And this is exactly what happens in VXX, which is a volatility product you might be familiar with. And the reason that VXX has this very predictable decay over time is that the VIX index trades in a very predictable range and a large majority of the time the futures contracts on the VIX are trading at a premium to the VIX index and when the VIX index does not increase or just even decreases these futures contracts will lose value over time and since VXX is tracking the performance of those futures contracts then it has this slow bleed over time. So the problem with a futures-based ETF is that if the futures contracts are trading at a premium to the asset that we are trying to gain exposure to, then if the asset price does not increase, then the futures-based ETF will add up all of these losses over time because they are continuously investing in futures contracts that are trading higher than the asset price. However, comparing the Bitcoin futures ETF to the VXX product is not apples to apples because there is an expectation 
that Bitcoin is going to increase over time because it has this number go up technology, which basically just stems from the fact that there is a finite supply of Bitcoin and demand is increasing and it's just getting more and more scarce over time. And if you have more capital flowing into that asset with only a limited amount of space, then the price is going to appreciate. And so I created another visualization to illustrate what this might look like in the Bitcoin futures ETF. So in this second visualization, we are again looking at an increasing spot price, which is the dotted line. And then we are looking at these three futures contracts yet again. So if we can imagine we invest in the Bitcoin futures ETF that is currently invested in the November futures and with Bitcoin's price actually increasing from our entry point to when the November future expires, we can see that the November future did increase in value and therefore the futures ETF would have gained in value as well. But the increase was less than what the actual increase in Bitcoin was. And so when you're investing in a futures based ETF, since the futures are going to have or if the futures are at a higher price than the spot price, even if the spot price does go up, the futures price is going to increase by a lower percentage and therefore the futures based ETF will have lower returns than the spot asset itself. And so this is really my problem with investing in a futures based ETF is that you are not exposing yourself to changes in the asset you are trying to get exposure to. You are really exposing yourself to the discount or premium that the futures contracts are to the spot asset and how that asset actually performs over time relative to the pricing of those futures contracts. So it's a much more complicated product. And it's interesting because there's a lot of uh, conversation going on saying, why did they approve the futures-based ETF when it's actually riskier and worse for investors than a spot-based ETF? So we'll probably see that in the future. And GBTC, which is the Bitcoin trust that actually holds Bitcoin, they just filed to convert into an ETF but from what I've heard, that's going to be a lengthy process and people are not expecting that conversion to happen until next year at some point at the earliest prediction that I've seen so far. So my recommendation is to avoid the futures based ETF in Bitcoin and just buy the real thing because when you buy the real thing, if it doesn't move over a six month period, then you're not going to have a profit or loss. Whereas if you invest in a futures based ETF and the futures are trading at a premium, to the actual price of the asset and the asset price doesn't change for six months, you're going to have a very decent amount of losses over that six month period. And obviously that's not a good thing for investors.